Confluence is a really great tool for writing a lot of content with your teammates, but sometimes it can be hard to figure out when to enhance that content with a really good diagram. Hi, I'm Matt with K15T, and I'm gonna talk about why diagrams matter to making your content really, really awesome the types of diagrams your team can create to communicate different types of things, and the different options you have available for creating diagrams right within Confluence. As you're writing, it can be really easy to forget that you totally understand the concept that you're writing about. You're the knowledge expert. The person reading your page doesn't. And sometimes a visual really is worth a thousand words. So <laughs> why not use a visual instead of writing a thousand words? Take for example, this table. This has a couple things going against it. The first is it's just visually very dull. So my eyes might just skip right over this thinking that it's not really useful information. Also, it's kind of overly complicated, right? The idea here was to help me get through the knowledge easier and instead it's making it more complicated for me. The best content is always enhanced with a really great diagram. Take a look at this. Now my readers can easily move through this troubleshooting process, make some logical decisions, and find steps that work for them. It's important to think about diagrams not as just sort of a visual aid to your content, but something that is just as powerful and unique. In fact, you might even be able to take that out of the content and use this diagram in other ways. Think about content and diagrams as a partnership. You know, Bonnie and Clyde, Buzz and Woody, Mike and Scott. So, as you start to make your diagram, you should be aware that there's already a lot of predefined types. So maybe you can already go out and pick out one that someone has put a lot of thought into so you can illustrate the type of concept or process you're looking to explore. So, as you're looking at things, consider some of these. Maybe when you're explaining a process, use a flow diagram. When you're brainstorming ideas, you could use a mind map. When you're comparing information, use a Venn diagram. When you're setting goals, you could use a SWOT diagram. And when you're building software, you could use a UML diagram. There's other great options out there like timeline or tree or wireframe diagrams. Lots of great use cases for these predefined types of diagrams, and these can help you be successful. Not only because someone's put a lot of thought into it already, but most diagramming tools have templates already put together for these different types to get you going so you don't have to start from scratch. And by the way, as you're working on those diagrams, there's lots of small things to keep in mind to make them successful. Check out our other video to learn all the small things you should keep in mind to make your diagrams great. To do diagramming in Confluence, you need to get one of the popular diagramming apps off the Atlassian app marketplace. And you might be thinking, well, I already have a diagramming app. It came with my office suite somewhere. Yes, you do have one, but there are some major advantages to using an app from the marketplace. For one, it connects your diagram directly to your page. So anyone coming in to modify the page will find that diagram. You can jump right in and modify it. It's connected there. Another thing is that it really helps streamline your workflow. If a team member goes and changes the content, maybe they update a term, they can go right into that diagram, change the term on the diagram and get out. It's not having to message a colleague who has the diagram on their desktop, update it, export it, re-upload it, and then you're finally done. It really keeps things moving quickly. And then finally, anybody on the team can upgrade that diagram. So maybe the person who designed it is out for the week and somebody needs to update that term. They can just jump in and do it because that diagram is living in an app, living in Confluence. There are some really great apps for creating diagrams in Confluence, and you're probably thinking, okay, which one should I use? Uh, it's hard to say, they're really, really good. We've used them, we love them, but really it's up to your team to find the app that works best for you. So here are some tips you can use to kind of nail down which one is gonna work best for your case. First of all, think about customization. Is it gonna take a long time to get templates and color palettes ready to go in the app so your team can use it? What about import and export? Are you always gonna have those images in Confluence? Or are you gonna to need to export the diagrams as SVG files or maybe put them in a PDF? 
What about integrations and extensions? Do you always see them living just in Confluence or do you need them displayed on other platforms like Jira or Trello? And then finally, think about collaboration. Ensure that the app you're looking at supports all the collaborative content creation your team wants to do so that anybody can create great diagrams. With these tips in mind, the best thing to do is to go on the Atlassian Marketplace and get a trial of the app. Trial two apps, compare them like that. We love that you can try things out, experiment with them, and contact the team behind those apps. Reach out to their support, get a demo, and take a look at their product roadmap to make sure the app that you select is going in the direction your team wants to go so you can create really great diagrams that visually enhance your content. So, diagrams are super important, and creating them can be a team activity if everybody understands why they're so important the types of diagrams you can create to illustrate the thing you're talking about, and the best ways to create them in Confluence. Using these techniques and tools, we've created some really great diagrams at K15T, and more importantly, we've put them in the right places. So when I stumble onto a complicated process page in Confluence, I can look at the diagram and understand what is going on. Now, that's just us. What has your team done with diagrams, and how do you make them awesome in Confluence? Let us know in the comments below. Now, this is just one of the many, many things you can do in Confluence, and at K15T, we're always looking to illustrate more. So subscribe, and maybe share this video with a teammate or another team who's trying to make great diagrams in Confluence, and follow along as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to do what you do best.